Okay, so <clears throat> you can see um, the first thing I'm going to do here is um, try to play in this drawing really carefully, right? And I'm just using, this is kind of what you do in a, in a comic book is plot values, right? This is a great way um, to do a drawing. It's just value blocking. You know, if you start if you start with the values and not the structure. So yeah, so you know what I mean? Like we could go back to schema or whatever and say like, okay, we're looking up at this tree and, and structure it out. Um, but that gets us too focused intently on the individual objects, right? And not on the environment. So the reality of your drawings is going to come from the sense that they're really taking place in space. The sense that, you know, stuff from your imagination can really be in space. So instead, so I'm not worrying about structure, about geometrical structure. Geometrical structure is only part of drawing. And the most important part is that uh, those structures inhabit a space, right? So in this instance, we're going to create the space by blocking in values, and then we're gonna do the structure afterwards, right? Um, that way we know that the structures are connected to the space. We start with that connection, um, and we avoid isolating things. All right, cool. So I'm just kind of giving myself a cutout for the values. Um, now, when you're doing this, you, you'll take a photo of a landscape and, um, you know, honestly, printing it out in black and white, if you have a home printer, is a great way to study the values. Um, but you could conceivably just freehand draw them from your phone or from a tablet or a screen or something like that. Um, okay, so okay, so here we have, so these are all kind of mid-tones, right? This mid-tone, this is mid-tone, and these are bright. Um, but then within these mid-tones, um, there's these interesting darker passages. Gosh, I love that. E even though I'm drawing super freely, it's it's automatically in perspective because it's real and you do get kind of the sense of all the forms sucking into a central point. A comic book way is just to signal that there's going to be a darker spot there. Right? Not all the way black. It, it, this stuff seems super organic, but it's super valuable. Right? Like you can see the clouds. See the clouds have these triangular forms because whatever organic form is happening here, it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And then maybe a darker shape within that. It's already like totally lovely. This is all a lot darker, right? I'm just blocking in the values. No, no more structure work. No, no three dimensional schema. Just, just the values. If you can have both of those powers, being able to see value and schema at the same time, that will make you powerful. Dark, 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 dark. Cool. Um, okay, so now we're moving on here. I love how, because of maybe the bushes or whatever, you know, there's this lighter patch. Like there's something This is maybe 
burnt out a little bit. It doesn't get as much water as the stuff near the path. Even, even just that shape, the clouds getting bigger and smaller, that sort of lets us know that we're in a landscape, right? Just that. I mean, see how abstract that is? But we have the feeling that we're in a landscape. Um, this shape of something curving back around in such a way, we have the feeling of it getting larger, right? This is irreplaceable. It's better than perspective, right? Just, just the fact of having something of uniform width getting smaller and curving off into the distance. We don't need those perspective construction angles here at all, right? If we can just develop this intuitively and draw this way without using a picture, then we're going to be super duper powerful. Now, this is a little pool of light, the shade of this tree. And light is never, never alone. You know, you know what I mean? So the shade of the tree will have this lovely little border, right? And the tree itself will be darker, the, darker than the shade. So, okay, right here. These are black. If you're, if you're plotting values for comics, you X them out. You can make something so believable just instantly. You know, we know the shape. This little upright stem and then a giant kind of towering cone. Uh, you know, and once again, we don't need the three-dimensional structure. We don't need, we don't need to say like, oh, these are junipers that Branches are kind of low, um, but it's always good to put in your eye line. You know, so here, here's directly where I'm looking. Um, you could do that schematic, that schema work where you say like, oh, I'm looking up at this. You know, if you want, that's fine. Uh, but because everything else is in place, uh, we already know that, right? And this is this is one of those things where you just check with yourself and you're like, oh yeah, I know how to do that. Um, uh, but I don't need to, uh, because, because that'll actually hurt the sense of distance, right? It'll, it'll make it so, so that, um, you know, if this is too detailed, if this is too schematic, then it looks like we're, it looks like we are right there examining it, right? Okay. So I'm just getting a feel for these forms, um, these rehearsal drawings are great. You know, a lot of people are just, just will say like, oh, I'm not, you know, I'm not artistic. I'm not good at art, but you know, just like if you were learning an instrument, you know, you don't just start by composing. You know what I mean? You, you study the compositions of others. So this is a visual composition. We're just doing a study, um, just in order to rehearse it. Um, so don't, don't, don't shortcut yourself by, by, um, making excuses or, you know, saying you do or don't care. You have this position on being creative or that position. You know, it doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is the practice and any, um, any way of practicing you have will benefit you. Um, I do this a lot. I have a little black and white printer in my office and I just take um, little pictures and study them. And um, I'm going to do the study for the whole thing, right? You know why? Because the study is the work. The physicality of it is what matters, right? So if I can get a little gesture that represents trees from far away, that's valuable. That, that'll that enter my language of drawing, right? Um, and this is a nice little supportive way to do it. Okay, X, X, that's gonna be black. And I might think of some textures here to show the brush. And then, and remember, in these rules I'm developing, I just want 
to make a texture that I'll be able to make smaller and smaller, right? A, a lot of you guys, when you, you know, like there's a lot of mountains in our autobiographical comics and there's a lot of trees. There's a lot of stories of like, and, and then I moved to Oregon and, you know, my life changed. And then in those, in that version, you know, and it was, it was a great way to represent trees. It's just kind of, you know, just like that. It's a little symbol for a tree, right? And this is a, this is a good texture. I mean, this is what a tree looks like, but, but what if, like, just what if these ones that are closer to the viewer could be bigger, right? And then these ones can get smaller and smaller and smaller. Even if you're drawing the same thing, it'll be, it'll become way more powerful. It'll become way more meaningful, right? Even if you're still working in this little symbolic, which I call your, your kind of initial conceptual schema, right? That you worked out. I mean, this is a valid pattern. The trees are triangular, right? But they're not all the same size. It's impossible to see them all the same size. And they're not on a white background, right? So, um, so we're still trying to build on those same initial schemas that you guys all start with. So for grass, I'm doing the same thing as these little arrowhead trees, right? I might just, I might just be practicing a little gesture and seeing how long it is. And then, see, and then noticing that it's darker on the path. And then sort of seeing if I can repeat that gesture and make it smaller as I go back. Right, and, and yes I can, right? If I can make those same marks going backwards, that's all I need, right? And it is, it is not different at all um, than these little arrowhead trees, right? But these are just kind of, they're too organized, they're in a grid and they're on a white background, right? All right, so now I'm going to, I'm going to render this drawing. Um, see here I'm going to pause the video while I set this up <clears throat> 